Good morning, good morning. I remember to turn on the mic today. That, that's hopefully a good sign. Um, I'm hoping you're having a great Thursday so far. Thursday, yes. I'm going to just move that over there. I set up uh, something directly above my head so you can see the um, uh, the simulation running, even if I have it into another window. Uh, now, right now, if I try to um, change the the size of it, I guess that kind of works. So if I use. Huh, interesting. So th that's working pretty good, actually. Now, th this is if I'm using the window short keys, if I attempt to change it via dragging. Oh, well, that still works also. What causes you not to work? Huh, I thought. Maybe we turned off my code that was doing it. Seems to be working now. Uh, I want to double check some of the uh, some of those turning things. So because that's the big that's the big last thing is resizing. Oh, right. Because I turned this off. So something I want to know is uh, up here an update. Um, I want to take a look at the I want to see it change when I drag a window. Like, is there a change in the drawable size? So before I maybe end here, I want to get drawable size equal to and then I just want to debug this. I want to run this and, and see what we got. So one thing off that, I did actually notice that this number changed. The drawable size here changes. So if I drag this left and right, yeah, I can see that number going down. And then it goes up. Yeah, so we could look at that. This is the X was changing from like 541. 550, 562, all the way up until eventually hit 624. Okay, so that that changes as I'm moving around, and that's the actual actual pixels I think that are that are visible and usable to me. Now, what is the window mode? Uh, can I get that? Is there a get? Oh, I bet it's um. So context dot. What do I have access to? Oh, is it conf? Is there a conf in here? No, no comp. Setup? No. Well, you're not helpful. Uh, let's go take a look at context.
Okay, so in instructs, we have this pub crate comp in here. So there is a comp. Okay. The comp object, the comp object, the context was created with, it's here just so we can see the original settings. Updating it will have no effect. And this is graphics context. Okay, so here's graphics contest. It has the window mode in it. Is there like a get? So I wonder I wonder if I need to set. Oh, no, that's the wrong. That was the wrong command. What was that one? So I know that the off of graphics, there is a set. Here for like set drawable size so we can set it to like what the drawable size is. Uh, so I wonder but the drawable size is already being set every time we do that. That seems a little bit odd, uh, but may maybe that works. Um, let's try this. So we get the drawable size and then we're going to do graphics set drawable size context. So if I do that, now, now how do you handle this? So we're starting here, and then I should be able to resize you. Okay, you work. At, okay, you still work. Now it still is able to handle the edges just fine. Like that all that all still works okay, so I think we're good. It's a little bit janky as we're moving though. But it works. Which means I can do things like making I could bring it all the way down and put it behind me. Actually, it might end up being something like. Whoa, stop growing. Ah, OK. Oh, wow. Whenever I move it across windows, it wanted to grow forever. That That's um. That's certainly something. Oh, even when I'm trying to like reset it. Oh, that's cool in a in not great way. Uh, stop. Oh, well, even if I manually resize it at the time, it just wants. Oh, but over here, it doesn't. I can move left and right and you're fine. But not over there. Oh, fascinating. Okay, so if I do that, you want to be gigantic. 
And I could put you like there. Oh, now you want to grow forever again. You're growing forever because in here, I'm telling you drawable size to set drawable size, which of course updates the drawable size. That's that's interesting. So I should not check every tick or so, um, or I need a better way of, of doing this. Let's go take a look at the documentation. Uh, I wonder if there's something good in there. And what version am I running? Uh, zero five. So yeah, okay, I'm running the zero five. Uh, I couldn't get the zero six to work. Like I, I tried getting it to run on Windows. Um, maybe there's been a patch uh, since then. We can try it again, see if it works. I think it works just fine on Linux, uh, but not Windows. Um, I might have to double check, uh, like check again. Um, but all right, how do I... Is there anything here about... Not really. Wait, why am I in timer? Nothing in here about that. So let's go into set drawable size and see what they say. Okay, there's also set the mode. And of course there's size. Okay, so set drawable size doesn't really have very much for us. Um, it just, it, it was just that sentence. Set mode. It's recommended to call set screen coordinates after changing window size. Okay, so set screen coordinates. Okay, so I think I need to set this every time that set that drawable size changes. I think that's the idea. So, okay, so this is off of graphics set screen coordinates. Now it'd be really nice if instead of doing all of this here, 
do this down here. So uh, we have the new width and new height, I believe. Um, maybe before I do that, maybe instead of doing that, I want to do a debug of the width and a height. I want to see what this is as I change it. Like, it, are these numbers changing? So we have this. Okay, it does. So that, that changes these numbers. That is good to know. Okay, so then I want to set screen coordinates. Okay, and so we this needs to be a new rect. New. Oh, that, that's fun. Uh, let's see, what happened when I went too small? Status access violation. Oh, I didn't like that at all. Is that just when I go too small? No, okay, that works just fine. Okay, so this is not setting it up the way, so it's not all the way down. It's uh, the left and right is the same, but if I move this over, you're gonna ignore the right hand side now, I bet. Well, I can't see you. But it's it's continuing like the, the original size is, is obviously the same, so that needs to be changed. So then the, the set drawable size probably also needs to be set too. No, we're, we're back to this problem. So the answer is that's not the right way to do it. Okay, so maybe we set the mode and then we set drawable, then we set screen coordinates. Maybe that's what we do. We set the mode. And then we can give it a new window mode. Okay, so we're gonna create a new window mode. Okay, I, th I think that works, even though REST Analyzer doesn't know what this is because the default, for example, doesn't... I don't know, it's implied, I guess. Uh, okay, so then we're going to set mode to so graphics. Set mode. Context and the window mode. 
we unwrap you and then we set the screen coordinates to the exact same thing that we set to here let's let's try this okay so you're happy oh i can't oh i can't set you anymore interesting i can move you around so we need Okay, so you're recyclable. So I guess like right away, it's seeing that there was some kind of size change and and hit that. That that wasn't good. Okay, so that's not the right way to do it. So I don't need the things that's like including the borders and the tile bar. I need the like the size that I have. I got some tea. All right. So screen coordinates gives this one. I wonder if I can get the screen coordinates and hand that. There was a resize event handling and to get the streamer game. Fork, if you want a reference. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at that. Also, good morning, Utsby. All right, let's take a look at this. This is a test mocks. Probably don't have to handle it there. I need. I think I need to just go to the library. Oh, it's in GameState.RS. Okay. No. Just the RS. Go to that. There. Okay, here's Game State RS. Three forty six. All right, I would have it would have taken me a while to get there. 346. Okay, so function resize event. 
Uh, okay, so take in self context, width and height, self that screen size. Okay, you reset that and then graphic set screen coordinates equals. Okay, so we we do the set screen coordinates and set it to the rectangle. Okay. Then self that interface that update screens. Okay, so we update the interface to be the right screen size and self the game window update dimensions. And I think that's so is, is really the only thing that's happening here that that's really helpful is this graphic set screen coordinates. Who calls resize event? Is that in um So there's that is are we looking are we using the Okay, the run game Wait, this is main now? No. Okay, so this is happening in here. The framework calls it. Okay, so you're not using, you're not catching the event. You're just every single frame setting, setting the size. So how, how does the framework know to go into that, the game state? Cause isn't isn't the event off of the event handler trait so it should be in here right it's like we have draw here it is resize event all right i missed it um okay so you're setting stuff that's okay yeah okay so you're using the resize event and then you're just setting the screen coordinates but the rest of it is just telling the game what to do for that. So it's just set screen coordinates. That. Where's my code? There you There's your code. This is what I was trying to do is set screen coordinates. Let me go ahead and unset this. So it's a rec new between zero, zero, and then the new width and height that's handed to me. Now for you, yeah, you're just creating a new rectangle with that entire thing. So this is what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I need to tell everything else that is that same size. All right. So that, yeah, the rest is down to me. So it changes the size of the window. And now I need to tell the rest of this. Hey, what is the size of the screen? Um, and where am I? Where am I storing that? Where am I getting that information? Uh, so, for example, in in the collision. Handle arena edges. Okay, the arena size is in this resource. So we need to update the resource for this um, to change it. Okay, so that's that's not 
too terribly hard. So in resize vet, uh, we're going to do that. Um, the the screen size. So get resource. Arena size. All right, so that gives us an RC. I want to, um, I want to mutate this. So borrow mute. That gives us that. And then I want to cast you, but I don't think this is going to work because it has to cast to a point uh can i not cast point mute do i not have a point mute okay this works so far but yeah i need to cast a point mute so Oh, and it's not in point, it's one up, it's in components. Oh, there is a cast point mute. Um, oh, but it's in resources, that's the problem. We have this point. Cast point, there's no cast point mute, let's fix that. Okay, so now we have a mutable reference to the screen size. Do we? You don't seem to be giving me much here. So we're going to set the screen coordinates, and then I also want to set the screen size. Dot X, what are you? Why am I not? Okay, so self dot world, get this resource. It gives us this RC. We're gonna borrow mute that gives us the ref, ref mute of the resource. We're going to cast point mute in resource. We have cast point mute. There we go. Now it works. Okay, so now I can uh, screen size dot X is now going to be equal to the width screen size dot height height Y is equal to height and okay, so what I need to do is have this be a a wrapped screen size equals everything up until borrow mute. Okay, then that happens. Ah, nope, don't, don't turn on. All right, what are you upset about? Uh, can I borrow wrap screen size? You need, to be, you need to be mutable, and you probably need to be mutable. Okay, now let's try it again. All right, everything is now staying away from the screen. That's fine. If I move you over to the right, okay. That works. There's a little bit of oddity as, as it sort of like resets a little bit. I wonder if I should, if I should run a clear. 
uh, that might make a lot of sense. Uh, I could run a clear on this. So what is that? That's a graphics clear. Uh, use a the context and and then the color. So we need to actually get this out here. So let's do a clear. I don't know if I like the idea of doing the clear right now, but it's like part of set coordinates also isn't clearing the screen. So this would like wipe out everything and those little weird little artifacts that show up would be gone uh, if I did this. Uh, my other choice is to set some kind of flag that we have cleared. Um, it's like resized. Resized is true. Maybe we should do that. And then the draw only has the clear. Uh, so what I could do is come back up to self. Okay, we have this world wrapper and then we're going to do um, uh, has sized is going to be a Boolean. We're going to set you to be false to begin with. When we resize you, we're also going to say, so we do all of this stuff. We update you and then we're going to do a self dot as resized equals true. Then in draw. We're going to get this background color out, but only if we do. Um, if self dot has resized, if you're true. All of you do this. So we're going to get extract our background color as the resource. Um, and then we're going to do a graphics clear. And then we're going to uh, let's see. Then we're going to do self dot has resized equals false again. So if I do this, what does that look like? You. Yeah, n none of the little artifacts and now if I go like that. that didn't work that resize didn't didn't do the thing it's still it's still getting like the weird little graphical glitches now that one's not even going away i wonder if that's even gg easy's fault or if that's something else with like the graphics card another option is to snapshot the window resize that and draw it out as the new starting background no idea how to do that in GGEZ in GGEZ though. Whoa, what's going on? Um Oh, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Our square also needs to be updated. We need to there's a few different things that we need to do. If we do this, yeah, the 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 line where we're blacking out uh, ends right here because that mesh is only set to be whatever this size is. So there's a um, we have to recreate that mesh whenever we resize. So there's a couple things we want to clear the screen and we want to recreate that mesh. This is sounding more like a um, maybe like some kind of system, like a resize system. So what would that end up looking like here? 
instead of doing a lot of things here, we could maybe set our flag and set the screen coordinates. Well, I guess like if we have this self resize true, if, if we do this and we just like keep keep the rest of this the same. Basically get out our screen size. We then set our screen coordinates. And we set the new screen size so that that's something we can definitely do. I think we need a system for handle screen size change that are s Okay, so if we take in the world wrapper and we take in the context. And we return uh, a game result. Then we get the new screen size. So that arena, uh, oh, this is going to be the wrapped arena size. Uh, we're gonna borrow mute this. Okay, so that's that's you. And then we're gonna get the arena size. Pass to a point mute. Um, and then we're gonna turn this into a rectangle. Uh, so let's see, arena rect. Okay, so that gives us our rect here. And then we can do the set, uh, what was it? It was set screen coordinates. This can now happen out there. So hand it the context and hand it the arena rect. Um, and then we can question mark this. Okay. Oh, uh, the, we got this one. So this is, this is the only thing that changes here now is this screen size. Now we do have this self has resized equals true. Oh, there's a screenshot which can give me a screenshot, but I think it saves it to disk, right? So I'd have to then load it from disk in that same frame. Or does it only save that to memory? I wonder. Just returns an image object. Okay, so that could definitely work. There's my copy. There it is. Oh, yeah, so it returns an image, takes a screenshot by outputting the current render surface screen or selected canvas to an image. So then what I could do is we go through this resize event. Um, we mark that we have resized. We handle screen changes. This is going to change the screen coordinates, um, but then also we need to update the mesh for like what we're blocking out and like slowly fading away. So we need to get that resource here too. 
So this is going to be let, uh, let's do them like this. Let mute. Um, it's going to be the wrapped hiding mesh. Like, what do we call it? Uh, the mapped clear mesh. Uh, so I don't think it's the background color. It's the clear screen. There it is. Uh, and we're going to borrow mute this. Why are you upset now? No method named cast point mute found for mutable reference. Oh, come on. You should be just fine. Nothing changed. I just grabbed something else out, too. Wait, what am I borrowing mute? Um... I'm borrowing mute off of the world. RC ref cell resource. Wait a second. Am I? I need world resource data. No, okay, so it's a hash map for ref cell resource. So it's it should be unique for one. So when I'm getting when I'm getting this other key, which is the name, I am getting my own ref cell to it. So I'm I'm not having to deal with like this ref cell is different than the arena size ref cell. Because they're different names. Like here we have arena size, here we have clear screen mesh. These are the two different keys, so I can borrow them both mutably at the same time. So I don't know why you suddenly don't know that this exists. Oh, it's unknown suddenly. What happened? Is it because I'm not returning something for you? World's wrapper? Because I somehow accidentally pressed an S there. I did, didn't I? Okay, so now we have you. Cast point mute. I mean, you should be fine. Uh, then I should also be able to get out the the um, the clear mesh. But you don't like this. Uh, these are the two errors that I found. No, nowhere else is it saying that there's an error. That's cool. Um, I kind of want to run this again. See if it still runs. No, it didn't. Okay, so it got somehow this got wrecked. So you're a, we do world, get resource, hand it the resource names. It's the arena size. Oh, why do we have a borrow mute here? That was our problem. We somehow got a borrow mute. And now, okay, so cast mesh mute doesn't exist. So we need to, we need to add that in. So in resource data, no, not resource data. It's resource. Oh, here's this cast mesh. Let's also cast mesh mute.
Okay, then the rest of it should be the same. Head back to here. All right, so you're all happy. You need to be immutable too. All right, so we have our we have our appropriate sizes here. We can recreate the mesh uh, now and assign it back to the um, uh, I guess this clear mesh. Um, Warclaw Sierspinski. I don't know if I pronounced your name correctly, but hello. Uh, I'm doing good. Thank you. Now setting this. I should be able to do this right here. I should be able to say. Uh, should be able to do clear mesh equals. And then where are my meshes? Okay, it's gonna be mesh, create clear mesh. Now it grabs from the drawable size, which I, th I think is fine at this point in time because we have a new the drawable size should be updated by this time here. So uh, clear mesh equals mesh create clear mesh and it into context. Question mark that. And now that sets the clear mesh. Okay, so expected a reference to a mesh, found a mesh. Wait, can I just dereference you? Okay. So you're saying you don't need to be mutable. Um, the arena size is being. OK, so we're creating a new arena wrecked and set screen coordinates. Yeah, this doesn't need to be mutable. Uh, we don't need to borrow mute. We just need to borrow. Because it's already been set for us. We're just, hey, when this when this runs, we're now we're now we're now doing the thing. Wait, deref mute is required to modify through a dereference, but is not implemented for ref of resource. OK, so I can't deref to then get to the piece of memory and reset it. I mean, my other my other option is I could just create a new. Maybe that would actually make the most sense is I just replace it completely instead of this like wrapped clear mesh because I yeah, let, let's just do this. Clear mesh, we don't need to do this. We have our arena size that we grab. Just so we can create the arena rect and set the screen coordinates. Uh, but then the other thing that I want to do here is um, we're going to create this clear mesh. And I want to now set this in the world. So we're going to do, can I even do that without a mutable world? World dot. Um, oh, I don't think I can do that. Uh, what was the add resource? Yeah, you're going to need to be mutable. I wonder if this is going to work. Um, OK, so we have name, add resource. Um, so you're going to be. Clear screen mesh. And the resource is going to be a. 
Resource Mesh. Clear Mesh. Yeah, and I can't borrow it as mutable because it's also borrowed as immutable. Um, right here, I'm doing this now. I wonder if I move you above and I like put you in its own block. And I put you in its own block, and then we can drop. Or should I have like two separate different? Um, uh, it might be best to have. Well, this this no, it doesn't work. That borrow data and dereference as immutable trait. Yeah. Oh, and arena size. I don't need you to be mutable. I can just cast point. I forgot that. Didn't need to be immutable either. There we go. That that makes you happier. So now does this work? Uh, wait, I need to call it. Uh, let's see. So handle screen size. Screen size change system. That's going to be in update. We can just run this. Uh, it doesn't have to happen on this level. We can do this here. So handle. Screen size change and it a mutable reference to self world um, and then a context and like that. Uh, what if I do you first? Cannot borrow stuff that the world is mutable because it also borrowed as immutable. Where does the mutable and immutable? Okay, so immutable borrow occurs at 110 right here. Okay, so can I just have you go first and we can block you? Oh no, you just go first. Once you're completely done, then we can move on to everything else. Okay, so that that's fine. So I want to test this before we do like any uh, any kind of like image nonsense. All right, so this works. And then if I go ahead and resize. Oh, that still works. OK, so everything is working as expected now. All right, OK, OK. So this is good. Now I can switch around and I can make it um, I can make it really long. And the clear screen thing should still work. So this is across like both screens that I have. Yes, okay, the, the uh, clearing mesh is now the appropriate size is for everything. Okay, excellent. Wait, I had it like way over here and it's not like showing permanently anymore. So that mesh is now being updated properly. So that's a that's a good sign. And we're not getting weird fragments as like, well, okay, this gets weird fragments, but it clears out properly because of the mesh. So that would be the next thing, right? We have to clear. We have to clear the screen. We have to take an image of the screen, store that as like an image, and then display that for like a frame.
I, I don't know if that's going to work because as this runs, Yeah, okay, so... I'm resizing, I'm looking at the tails. And the tails start over again exactly where they are, but previously the tails would exist, so there would still be a little bit of... jarring effect there. Hello, Tigger Gallus! Um, thank you! Yeah, I think this looks pretty cool too. Yeah, so I, I think there's a I think there's gonna be a problem if I use the image. Now, that being said, like there there still could be a really good reason to use the image to just take screenshots and like save them to disk. Cause there there's some cool design things that we can do here. Especially when it transitions from like orange to yellow. Um that feels pretty pretty nice. Especially we get like the little swirlies. So I think it's not required. Lots of commercial games completely reset everything on risk change. I think I think that's what I'm going to do here because I can't see the tails acting correctly. If I didn't have the tails, I think that might be a different thing altogether, but it would still be a jar. A jarring experience as that happens. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead um, how do they implement the tails? So the easy thing uh, for this, let's let's see if I can find out where, where this is in my mesh. Uh, my voids are completely white. But they're also fully colored. They're also completely fully colored. Um, but in a main main library in my draw loop, I removed the clear screen. So like there's no clear screen happening except when I change the, the screen size. Uh, so that means if I were to uh, not do the clear screen system, uh, they just smear all over the world. Like that's that's what they do. They just smear and the, like the uh, this will just stay forever. Um, the other thing is I'm having, uh, even though I have all of the voids start as as white in color, uh, I overwrite that with a constantly changing color. So starting from black, going up all the reds, then all the greens, then all the blues, then down the reds, then down the greens, then down the blues, uh, and cycling in that way, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but it's sort of like it leaves this this trail on. I have a, a rectangle that's the exact size of the screen that I'm applying every single frame. And it's just a very subtle, like it's just black, but uh, with hardly any al um, alpha at all. So it, it just fades everything away. And yes, it mutes these colors just a tiny bit, but not too much. And it can be played around with too, but yeah, this this um, that's how I end up doing that. So in here, uh, clear screen system. If we head over into here, we're just drawing this out uh, for the m clear screen mesh. We can see that it's um, it's the full size of the screen, and with a zero five alpha. And I like this can be played around with to be like some other value. And it changes, it, it actually changes the look and feel of the, the simulation quite a bit. Like it fades a lot slower now. So you still get the streaks and you still get a little bit more vibrant colors, but then they eventually will disappear. So I, I think it's, I think it's still pretty cool.
they kind of look like rockets because they're constantly slightly changing their positions to try to go towards each other. They're, um, they look like contrails, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to put this to like 0 0.4 maybe. We had it at 0 0.5. It's maybe a little bit too much. This might look a little bit better. And then I can now also resize you. And then we're, we're good to go. Yeah, the contra they the trails are a little bit longer now. I like it. All right, so I'll leave that sitting there. Let me actually yeah, that can look that can look out that way and be right above me. Uh, so I want to go ahead. Nothing needs to be saved, I don't think. No open editors that need to be saved. Let's just go ahead and close all these windows. Yeah, good. I'm going to push this all, commit this all, and push it all up. So with flocking, can now say, uh, can now resize window um this completes the mvp push that up and the bbecs what do we do here for resource we just added some casting for for meshes so added mutable casting for mesh and point I can go ahead and push you up to. Uh, so what I want to do is try. Uh, try running this like. See, see what we can get um, performance wise out of this. So this right now is. 100 of these birds, if I but I can do this in, in debug mode. If I do 500 birds in debug mode, I don't think this this is going to work out very well at all. Actually, surprisingly works out really well. OK. Never, never mind. Doesn't feel like 500 of them. If I do 800. Ah, now we're running into problems. Oh, did I not save? Oh, no. OK, hold on. I, I forgot to save, didn't I? All right, uh, we're going back to 500 and saving this time. Thank you, Tigger Gallus. Yeah, OK, so this is really unhappy now at 500. So we need to switch over to release mode to get this to work. And in release mode, here we have 500 entities all interacting together in a flow, you know, essentially a flow field. Um, I guess it's not really a flow field, but in the, the flocking simulation. Uh, and this is this is nice and smooth. I actually like it when there's uh, more of them for the space that exists. Now let's see how far can we go to let's do 750. Let's 
saved it. Okay, you're still happy. It's still working at a pretty decent frame rate, it looks like. Uh, should we try 1,000? Well, I'm, I'm gonna anyways, so... Okay, it can't handle a thousand now. Now it's freaking out. Now, a way for me to be able to get this many more... Uh... Uh, it's kind of almost working. I wonder if I can be able to get like 900 on the screen. So a way for me to be able to get more entities on a screen and have it be fine is not having them check for essentially collisions with each other uh, every single frame. So um, every single frame, they're looping through each other multiple times in order to find who's close to me. And let me figure out what your average you know, locations close to you is. Uh, what is your average locations, um, like your average velocities? If I used a sort of like a grid system or a, a quad, um, is it a quad tree? Uh, yeah, this is the edge. It's every once in a while slowing down when they're all really close to each other. Um, uh, Lord Miz, hello. Yeah, when they're when they're a little bit, they're, they're checking. They're having to do loops, so like every single one is having to do a check with everyone else. Just not, uh, not, not great. But this still looks really, really nice. I, I like it a lot. That is really satisfying. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I like the look of this too. It, it reminds me of like old school screensavers. Um, what's the resource now use now? That is a good question. Uh, all right. I need to remember Go to secret. Oh, you know what I should do with secret here? Uh, give me a second I'm gonna add in Oh wait, I'm gonna go you're there. I'm going to add in window capture. You. There. Now you now you get to see this is the secret screen now. I I don't think that's that's too bad of a secret screen. Oh, I should put my you go below me. There we go. Um, all right, so what am I doing? I am figuring out how to open this up without crashing my, like without exposing anything bad. All right, right, it's control shift escape. And right, okay, there's nothing, there's nothing really bad here. Oh, but now, now we have all this, ah, uh, you can, you can, nope, that one's fine. You go away. Okay, so looking at this, here's our flocking rust. Uh, it's using 7.2% of CPU, 40, 40 megabytes of memory, 28, so let's just round up and say, like it's capping around 30% of the GPU. Um, power usage very high. I wonder why. So CPU wise, it's it's not very heavy. It's the GPU. So I don't know. I feel like I should be able to add get more in there. 
but I wonder if it's like my GPU engine not not being the best. Or I wonder if it's because the GPU is being used by like Firefox. I have multiple Firefoxes. Oh, and OBS. Running OBS is probably not helping this in any way whatsoever. At the same time, I bet I can squeeze out a little bit more. Oh, um, task manager is really inaccurate with that. I don't think those 20% mean anything. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, maybe it's just too long to calculate the collisions. Yes, that would that would do it. Danny Fritz, hello. If each point is an instance, that could be GPU intensive. Um, yeah, I'm not doing anything like, OK, so things that I could really, really, really improve this with. In our draw component. Where is it in our draw system? Draw birds. Uh, we're just taking each bird and then doing a draw command on it. Not not the best. Um, no, it's it's not doing any smart batching, unfortunately. Uh, it's not like love 2D, uh, which which would be great if it did. Uh, so what I could do is they're all the same. Uh, they're all the same color. They're all the same. Everything else I could create a single mega mesh for every location and then just do a single draw command. That's something that I could definitely do here. Um, that would reduce the draws down. Uh, for the CPU calculations, I could uh, use a grid system so it queries out like, hey, just get me what's near me and I don't have to check my like if I'm close to everyone around me, uh, like everyone in the entire arena. So the the more the bigger the arena is, the more units there are, the worse that is. I think those would be like the two big, huge improvements to this uh, that we could make. And so maybe what I'll do Let's come in here. Let's actually create some issues for our blocking rest. What did I do? Oh, I'm just changing the numbers then. That's fine. I don't really need to deal with that. Let's create some issues. All right. So um, issue with this, we want to um, this is my ECS library in action. It is. Yeah. So this is a, a brand new ECS library from scratch. Uh, I'm not using the what? What libraries am I using in there? I, I think it's um, I think it's like super, super, super simple. I'm just using GGZ and N algebra uh, is in there. And I don't even think I'm using N algebra uh, properly. I think I like reset that. Grid system will introduce other issues like what to do if I'm on the edge between two. Yes, exactly. So there, there is issues with that. Now with this, with the um, with the number of. With the the size, of the components being really small, I could just query uh, like two out, like wherever I am, plus one up and I'll be fine. But like if I have weirdly shaped or like bigger entities, that could definitely be an issue, too. A one minute performance improvement would be to change your distance checks to avoid the square root. Um, oh, I should really try piston. I don't know, like every time I'm thinking about like trying a different um, game engine, I also think that I should just go to Godot or Godot. I don't think Piston doesn't have like an interface uh, like like Godot does. Piston's way more lightweight than GGEZ and definitely Godot is going to be way faster and less abstract. So you learn more.
Wait, it's more lightweight than GGZ? Like, you have to do even more with it? Maybe, I, I can add it to my list to look into. Um, one of the nice things about GGZ, GGZ takes care of so much compared to Piston. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. I thought Piston took care. I thought GGZ was pretty much the one that took care of the least. Um, okay, so create new issue. Uh, introduce a grid um, system uh, to help with the try macro quad similar to GGZ. And then there's also Bevy, but I've been waiting until Bevy gets a little bit more completed. Uh, before I switched over to that. Yeah, and we did take a look at Bevy before. It, it does look pretty cool, but it's um, I'm just waiting until it's like a little bit more feature complete. Like it stabilizes, stabilizes a bit more. Um, okay, so introduce a grid system to help with the uh, help reduce number of calculations per frame. So currently, we are um, currently every void uh, checks every other void in the world uh, to see if is in range for a void checks over every other void in in the world to see if it's in range for a um uh what what, what do we call this um to see if it is in range for a uh like a like whatever math it's going to do. Um, system to do its thing. Would be great to have a grid system that would help um, query for only the voids that we need to check. Go directly with Vulcan. Um, yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of uh, th th there's a lot of people that have been doing that on like the 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 subreddits. I've noticed for for Rust because I've I've seen like a lot of people. Oh, I've just been learning Vulcan, and here's like this really cool rendering that I did, and it's like, oh, that's really cool. I don't know how to do that at all. But then, like, I think about the time necessary for that. I'm like, but then I can make one of these. Uh, instead of Vulcan, use WGPU RS. That's what Togglebit is doing these days, right? I think, I think so. Okay, so um, this would be nice for this. Just set up a Vulcan is about a thousand lines. That's sort of like what I've been seeing when people are like, complaining about the usage of Vulcan. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think I'll probably not do that. Like I, I'm I'm also doing this for like fun and anti burnout work. So I think I think that's you know, I have to take that into account as well. Let's see. Up query of the boards and check. Um, the grid system itself might end up being another library similar to BBECS. Okay, so I'll, I'll create that issue. Um, another issue that we can do with flocking rest here is combine um, draws find void draws into one super draw 
voids are simple uh, triangles around their locations. We could create um, a super mesh of every void together, um, every frame that we can do a single draw call um, in the draw loop every frame. Yeah, I just I turned it on not not uh, not too long ago because he just came in and, and laid down. Although he really likes to face away from the camera towards the closet wall. So this would this would probably give us the biggest performances, especially if I was going to try to run this on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so there's there's those two. Now, BBECS. What can I do here? Uh, there's actually a bunch of things that I that I want to to get done for this. Uh, so I want to like actually deploy this, you know, deploy to creates.io. Currently, we are pulling in um, ECS library through uh, just like a file source directly, which is suboptimal. Let's deploy this so we can get proper versioning. Um, in each program we use. Uh, something else that would be nice is set up CI CD workflow for auto deployment. Um, we need to add some testing test cases and set up a probably a, a github um actions ci cd pipeline to auto deploy to crates.io um whenever we push to the main branch and the version number uh, gets bumped. You prefer drone over GitHub Actions for CI/CD. Uh, at work, we use uh, Circle CI and also like the the new um, AWS Code Deploy, uh, which both of them have been you know fine. There's so many of them though. All right, so we've set up both of those. Now, other things that I would love to be able to do is um, figure out how to borrow and borrow mute um, from the library. Currently, users of the library get a, um, a ref or a ref mute um, and need to borrow or borrow. Oh wait, actually it's an get an RC um, ref cell, uh, which then they have to borrow or borrow mute um, to do anything useful. Maybe we can find a way to do the um, borrows 
in the library and return the ref and ref mutes directly. So that would be, you know, nice as well. Um, something, something else in here is set up proper uh, error handling. So uh, right now the library opts to crash and the user um, uses it incorrect uh, correctly. Um, it would be nice to return options or uh, results when bad things happen instead of just panicking. Uh, does anybody have the same urge as you to learn Rust or C++, but does not have a project to make with it? Uh, you don't like to learn new stuff without real use. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm in the same case. I don't like to learn something without having like some idea of what to do with it. But that's why I'm also doing these things. Like the game dev type stuff is, to me, it's helpful because like it's fun um, and it's hard and it's new, easy, new language. Sure, you can find something. What you'd like to do is look for some things you do manually. It could be automated or rewrite some projects you've done in other languages. Um, and then Danny says, Nano is an active and older Rust create for graphics that was inspired by processing. Yeah, I, I remember when Nano got announced and it's been used for some pretty high profile, sort of like IoT art type things, which is pretty cool um, on its own. Um, okay, so is there anything else in here that I really care about doing before I would move on to like the next the next project? I don't know. Uh, this this might be good for for us to sort of like work on between projects to get this to get this good. All right. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and th all these things are pushed up. So I think, oh wait, you're not pushed up. Oh, because we have like 900 here. Is there a way? No, it, it would be a terrible idea. I should, I should just undo this, reset. There you go. There we go. I was gonna say like, is it was there a way for me to like set it to be like really high in release mode and really low in um, not like development mode? And I, I'm sure there is, but it's also I don't think a great idea for me to do that right now. All right, you can with right. I could probably I could probably do something with. Um, What it, what is it called? It's um to let that um word count and then I want to be able to say it's like a config, right? Config It's not tests cuz that's like one run test. Uh it's, is it production? I don't know if it's like production or release mode, maybe. Um, then I could do like bird count is equal to uh, like this would be 900. Um, then I could do config. Um, oh, you should. OK, I, I should actually make this mutable. Equals to like 100. 
That way, if it's if we're in release mode, we get 900. Otherwise, we get 100 for our tests. Uh, you're not happy. Code is inactive due to config directives. Releases disabled. I would need to tell release. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how to do this properly. Um, that would be really cool, though. To sort of like set this up. I mean, the other thing that I could do is slowly add more um, like every 200 frames uh, until. Okay, so. We can just keep on adding them until the average uh, frames per second drops below like a certain certain amount. That that might be that might be cool. Uh, so in here, um, keep adding, select, it. add just enough um, voids, the system and handle. Um, We can check the FPS and keep adding voids every few frames until we um, hit uh, around 60 to 90 FPS. So that could be that could be an interesting, fun thing to do as well, uh, because right now, if I do this, you're going to yell at me. And if I try to run you, are you going to run? No, you're not going to run because you're an error. So I need to set in like the cargo toggle that releases an actual. Uh, that releases allowed. Oh, attributes on expressions are experimental. Oh, I can't do this. Okay. Well, then never mind. Never mind. Let me go ahead and undo this change. And then we should be fine there. All right. So, um, it is 836. Uh, means it's time to wind the stream down so I can head off to work and go do my day job. So we're done with the boids, the boids, but the like one of the big reasons we were doing the flocking simulation was to work on this BBECS. So I think we're going to spend a few more streams uh, working on some of these issues so that I can deploy this properly. Um, we can work on maybe some of these other um, these other things will update the boids uh, to use whatever new systems we do, and then we'll deploy it, give it a like zero one zero or something, and then we can start like another project uh, using this ECS and updating it as necessary. But a lot of the initial work has been done. So this will clean up the ECS and make it even better. So I think we'll start with that uh, tomorrow morning with with one of these issues. Um, or if another one if I can think of it between you know now and then. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and 